Tarot Monday. Ooh, gotta love when it's nice and close. Hello, happy Monday, everyone. I hope you're excited to hear more about today's medal. I'm so excited to share about it. Ah! Whoa, uh -oh, technical difficulties. Here we go. Yay, all right. We got that up and running. Good afternoon, everyone. I definitely almost said good morning. Here's one thing I'm really known for is when I'm out running is to tell people at any point in the day, good morning. I don't know if I'm the only person to do that. Please let me know if you do it as well. But it's like, no matter what time I see someone, I'm like, good morning, everyone. And they're probably like, it's five o'clock in the afternoon. We need to get this girl some coffee or something else for sure. Um, but thank you, Kelly. I'm glad to say that I'm not the only one. Um, light those hearts up if you're having an amazing Monday so far, because I know I definitely am. Um, already got my run in this afternoon in the sweaty, soupy, soppy mess that is Boston. It's awesome to see how many hearts we've got going on. So clearly people are having a really good Monday. Yay, that's awesome to hear. Um, for anyone that that doesn't know, my name is Danny. Um, I blog at weightoffmyshoulders.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and most social media as at Irish Eyes 1982, just like my Periscope name. So thank you guys so much for joining. Um, for those that don't know, I kicked off Metal Monday last Monday um, by sharing my uh, first ever 5K medal, which I still cannot even believe was in 2005. Um, and so what I'm doing is basically I have probably over 100 medals. And what I thought was, you know, I love sharing the stories behind every single medal that I own. So why not do that on Monday, right? It makes sense. It's a nice um, flow on the hashtag. And we can all use a nice fun pick me up on a Monday afternoon, right? Okay, are we ready to rock and roll? Send those hearts a blazing if you're ready to hear about my first ever marathon. Yay, it looks like we're ready to hear about the first ever marathon. Okay, so for those um, that do not know, thank you for all those hearts. Yay! My first ever marathon was September 21st, 2006. We are coming up on the nine year anniversary of my first marathon. I can't even believe it. So this is the medal from my first ever marathon. You can see here, it's the Clarence De Mar Marathon. It took place in Keene, New Hampshire. Um, and let me tell you, really small field. Okay, so little backstory for those that don't know. I started running in January, 2005. Started with a quarter of a mile, grew a little bit each time. Thank you, Nancy. Yay, medals. Um, and what I decided was after I ran my first half, I was on that nice runner's high, and I decided to sign up for uh, my first marathon. So that was going to be this one in 2006. So during the training of the first marathon, I got injured and didn't do the best of job training. But I basically said, I've already told all of these people about this marathon. I have to at least give it a try. Not my best move, but we're moving forward with the story. So I drove up the night before with one of my friends, Becky, and she uh, stayed over with me the night before to kind of calm my nerves. And then my dad was going to drive up the morning of to cheer me on. And a couple of the friends were going to also run with us. Um, so yay, Emma, I'm glad you love it. Um, so what happened that morning was I decided that one of my friends was going to be using it as a training run. So I was like, you know what, I'll just start running with you and we'll see how the pace feels. Really hadn't come up with a game plan of what my pace was going to be in case anyone's wondering. I wasn't really the most prepared runner when I first started, didn't really follow training plans, only had a stopwatch, like was not very prepared for this, but I was going to give it my all. Also to just keep going with the like unprepared is that I didn't really bring enough fuel. Um, really, I learned I can teach people a lot of lessons from my first marathons of things not to do. Um, so absolutely Kelly, it's really hard with pacing to know like what's gonna work for your body. But this moral of the story, the story is I started out way too fast because I was running with my friend who was going to stop after uh, 10 miles as part of her training run. And I was going to continue on to, you know, finish the whole 26. So as I was running, I was realizing that I was did not bring enough fuel. Um, there's actually a woman that passed me during the race um, that yelled at me for not having enough fuel, then proceeded to run in front and find my dad and yell at him for not having enough fuel or for me not having enough fuel. Yeah, it was taken to the next level. Um, so basically, while I was doing the marathon, my dad left, went to like a CVS, found me some sort of 
Nutri-Grain bar and brought it back to me. So by the time I got to mile 20, I was toast. I was feeling dehydrated. I was feeling hazy. My knee had basically like given up hope of participating in said marathon. It was done. So all signs at mile 20 of like hitting the wall occurred at this marathon. There was a big wall that I tried to knock through and it was just not happening. But at that point, my dad said, maybe it's really that you should have stopped. And I said, no, I am not stopping. Uh, if I have to walk the last six miles, I will. So basically the last six miles were a little bit of a run, walk, hobble my leg along sort of situation that happened. Um, and I was lucky enough that this uh, race was happening in a very small town in New Hampshire, so there wasn't a lot of like street traffic or anything like that that we had to combat with, but there was a nice hill at mile 22 that went like straight up vertically after a gentleman in the race had told me that it was flat after mile 15. I don't understand his definition of flat, but it's not the same as mine. So we had a huge mile uphill at mile 22 and then one of my friends actually surprised me up from Boston and since it was such a small race she just drove next to me in her car playing music so that I wasn't alone so it's basically like tears listening to music hobbling along then it starts downpouring it was very like all hands on deck of like things that could happen during the race did and all I could think about was this medal at the end there was no way I was going to stop. So probably a few miles out, I'm probably like closing in on mile 24. The race director comes by in his truck to let me know that if I didn't finish in the next like five minutes, everything was going to be shut down in the finish area. Has anyone ever told you that the whole race was going to shut down before you finished? Any hearts? No one probably. That is pretty much one of the worst feelings that you can ever have. So basically at that point I said there is no way that it is going to be shut down. I am going to finish and this is going to happen. So I pretty much tried to hobble my leg as best I could. It was maybe two other guys around me and they were older gentlemen and I was like all right here we go. So I'm hobbling around and then I saw the finish line and I just gave everything I had to cross right before. So what happened was they barely had the timing thing still up. The tress was still up, but massage gone, food gone, like water gone, everything else was gone. I finished and I wasn't even sad. I finished in 559.27. So under six hours, I was fourth to last. I beat out two older gentlemen in their 60s and one of their sons who was in their 40s. And that was my first marathon. So when I crossed, there was no ice. There was no like really celebration. It was just like me, my dad, and my friends going, okay, well, time to go to Olive Garden, I guess, or Bertucci's, wherever we went. And thankfully, my friend was able to get me ice bags when we went to lunch. It was Bertucci's. And we just put them on my legs while I sat there and had lunch. Um, and at that point, I swore I would never, ever run a marathon again. So if anyone hasn't followed my journey recently, I am currently training for marathon number nine. Uh, so that did not deter me. It did actually land me from, uh, I stopped running for four years. I was like, done. Nope. Don't want to do that again. This wasn't very fun. Wasn't very exciting. I don't want to do this anymore. I hurt my leg. So I stopped running for four years. Um, as you can see, I have found my way back, but I will say I have no regrets over this first marathon. This medal means more to me than probably any of the other medals that I have. It's always very hard to pick your favorite, um, but this one is one of them because it was definitely one where I had to really, really dig deep and push through and finish strong. And I couldn't believe that I finished it. I couldn't believe that I had the drive in myself to even start to even think that I would be capable of doing it and it's always the thing that I remind people that if you are thinking there's no way I can finish whatever the obstacle is you can you have the support around you I would not have been able to finish that day without my dad and my friends um, you have me in particular in your corner um, and it is really something where, oh, I'm sorry that you didn't get a medal for your first marathon. It's sad when ra races don't give marathons, especially medals, uh, marathons, because of like how far you had to go during that one. So sometimes I'll make my own. If you ever have a race that doesn't give you a medal and you feel like you deserve one, make your own. They're actually not that expensive and I highly recommend doing it. I have a couple of my own. Um, and so that's one of it. Okay, collegiate event can be understandable. Um, but definitely I keep this medal in particular 
making sure that I, I hang it up because it really does give me the drive and reminds me every day that I can push past whatever goals I don't think I'm capable of and the only person standing in my way is me. It's so true. So who's ready to go out and tackle their week? Let the hearts fly if you're ready to tackle this week in your fitness and your athletics. If you're ready to go out there and get strong and we're going to go out and push all those doubters down, which is basically owning ourselves. We're going to go out and win. And then we're all going to get together next Monday and hear about the next medal. It's really hard for me to decide yay hearts, which medal to do next. So it might just be pick random out of a hat because I really wanted to get the 5K and the marathon medal out first. But thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll catch you all next week on Marathon Monday. And in the, in the meantime, go out and get those dreams, because you got it. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.